All right. Day 64. I say with not complete confidence. But what I am sure of is that it's fucking back day. Uh, it's an ungodly hour. Uh, my sleep schedule has become abhorrent. Though the amount of sleep I've been getting is very nice. This is a... I'm back home for spring break, so I've had nothing to do. So essentially, uh, I wake up, you know, I do my cardio, I come back, I get some food, then I go to bed again, and I sleep for a while, and then I get up, get some more food, and then I sleep, and I get up, and I get some more food, and then I sleep, and then I go to the gym, and I repeat the cycle, it's fucking great. So, back... Gonna be going to Planet Fitness again. Another little Planet Fitness episode. Uh, honestly, I mean, you know, I wouldn't want to do a ton of chest workouts at Planet Fitness, since I, you, know, you got to start off heavy, and I don't only want to do. Hmm. <sighs> you know, I don't only want to do Smith Machine bench as the primary mover. So. But for back, uh, it's more than well enough equipped with, uh, you know, pull downs, cable rows, just the cable stacks in general are good for back. They've got some, every Planet Fitness I go to, they have this cool rowing machine too. It's like unilateral. I'll be using that later. So let's just get in there and get a fucking gnarly pump. God damn it. So, I mean, I already warmed up with just, like, regular cable shit. So, I'll just keep it reasonably basic. Set off three sets of uh, pull-downs. No drop sets or nothing. Just straight up 10, 12 reps, something like that. Obviously, you're going to want to squeeze your reps, but I've kind of noticed as of late that I get a way better back pump going slow. Like, instead of just bouncing those lap pull downs back and forth, I was really trying to squeeze the fuck out of it at the bottom. So, definitely some advantage into controlling the weight and squeezing it rather than just moving it around. So, next. I think I'll do at least two sets of single arm cable rows. I like it more than dumbbells, plus the dumbbells here aren't heavy enough anyway. So I've seen a lot of posts as of late where people are saying that if you do one arm at a time for an exercise, like perfect example, like you do the right arm rows and then the left arm, they've been saying that you should wait a few minutes in between the two sets. <clears throat> Their logic being that you tired yourself out so much from working one side that you need to rest and recover before you hit the other. That doesn't make any fucking sense to me at all. In the context of like, you know, hypertrophy training, bodybuilding training, apart from, you know, crazy compound lifts, where like you're doing squats, maybe crazy bench or something, you shouldn't be uh, cardiovascularly failing 
right? You shouldn't end your set because you're so out of breath, right? You should end your set because of like the feeling that you're getting in the muscle, right? You're getting muscular fatigue. So in my mind, I'm not fucking worn out after that one set with the right arm. I, I didn't work my left side at all, right? It's fucking fresh. Just go straight back and forth. Don't worry about extra rest time. I think that's stupid. Okay, so that's six sets done, three pull downs, three rows. So since I like kind of alternating between rowing and pull downs, I think next obviously do a pull down movement. Uh, I'm thinking at least two sets, pullovers, double arm, straight to a lighter pull down. Uh, the logic being the pullovers are just gonna, you know, wear down the lats a little bit pre-exhaust style, and then really squeeze the fuck out of them on the pull down. So should add up to a pretty gnarly pump. Don't be afraid to go really heavy on pullovers either. Double arm pullovers are fine. I'm gonna do a single arm for the last set. And then we can move on to two more sets of something to be done. One thing that's nice about those single arm pullovers, too. <laughs> is that while you're doing them, you know, with your opposite hand, you can feel your lat flexing. So, that's almost like the equivalent of, you know, sitting on leg extensions and holding on to one quad at a time, or doing preacher curls and feeling your bicep. Uh, I mean, I don't really have to as much now. I pretty much get the gist of, like, you know, contracting a muscle while I use it. But as a beginner, super helpful. Something about like feeling your muscle tense up. It'll just help you squeeze it even harder. So finisher, thinking just two sets of, uh, of rows. I didn't want to use the lat pull down bar just because it's going to be so heavy. It'd be like fucking just weird holding on to. So this little W bar will do fine. I just don't want to use the V bar. I feel like it's a little bit too close for my uh, for my preference. <sighs> 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 <sighs>
<sighs> okay. How's the pump looking through the shirt? Ah. <sighs> Well, let's see what let's see what all that was for. So I didn't make use of any of the machines I was talking about before I fucking came here. All I did was pull downs and rows. A few different varieties, but still. That was it. So let's see if such a basic workout still elicited a pump. And again, you know. Posing down out in the middle of P-Fit just seems preferable to going into the locker room. I certainly feel pumped. Mm. Holy shit. <laughs> it's like a fucking turtle shell. Love it. have to review that footage to really analyze all of the muscle insertions but just by feel as a highly effective lift I'm in a, I'm in a couple of like lifting group chats and one guy was asking for a back workout and it kind of perplexes me because after a while I mean just if you get the right information and know where to look. Uh, if you got a set number of sets, you know, for me, I got 11 that I pretty much do for every muscle group because that adds up to about the right workload per week per muscle, then I can pretty much do any exercises that I feel like, right? Uh, obviously, I'll fall into a couple of patterns like chest, I always start with some kind of bench and, you know, squats are always first for quads. But other than those like little nuanced things that I pick up just from preference, like I could have done this whole lift in a completely different order. And as long as the intensity was there, I'm still going to get that crazy pump. So it's not so complex as how to hit the muscle. The first thing you should be worried about is just hitting the fuck out of it as hard as possible, right? So, I got some car talk to get started, and uh, I'm going to finish calves first, so let's get the fuck out of this place, goddammit. There we go. Highly successful back day, especially for Planet Fitness, given their reputation. Uh, I did, uh, <laughs> I did get pulled aside at the end when I was leaving. They said, uh, they didn't, they didn't like me filming in there. But, luckily they were nice enough not to stop me. Not to stop me halfway through. Or else, you would have seen like three sets of pull-downs, and that would have been the end of it. <laughs> uh, so, luckily, that was the last Planet Fitness lift for a uh for right now at least because i'm headed back to the normal gym in a few days so tomorrow's gonna be arms honestly i was thinking about going to planet fitness again just because you know whatever everything's there but you know if they don't want me messing around i will take my take my lift elsewhere not that it really changes anything. I mean, arms is just fucking arms. Whoa. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, like I was saying, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, this is kind of why I got a little bit of beef, not real beef, with, uh, with some of the science based posts that I see a lot. Like, you know, talking about the most perfect, optimal way to execute a lift and like the most optimal tricep workout. It's, uh, hell man, maybe, you, maybe they're 
perfectly right. Maybe what they're saying is the exact truth. But what good is that going to do the beginner lifter if he gets to a mild level of discomfort mid-set and then says to himself, Yep, that felt good. That felt good enough for me. I'm done. It's just going to hinder his growth. I don't care if you give a kid the most perfect training, like you give him a customized lift every day based on his, uh, like you got, you got a fucking legendary coach looking at him exactly and like coaching him through the lift to tell him the exact sets to do or the exact like work the what am i thinking exercises but if the kid doesn't go hard he's not going to make any more gains than any other schmo you know like as long as you're not skipping workouts like you don't skip leg day or whatever and you actually go in on a consistent basis you hit everything about twice a week uh first and foremost as a beginner Learn the basic movements, you know, watch, uh, watch some tutorials or ask some bigger guys for tips on like, you know, how to do a tricep push down. Like, Hey, is my squat form? All right. Some shit like that. But once you, once you reach the point where you know how to lift, it's going to be more beneficial for you, at least at first to improve your intensity over time. Like for me, not so much now. Because for the most part, I feel like I can push myself pretty hard. But every few months when I was starting out lifting, I would have this same sort of thought to myself. Like, I'd be in my little basement gym or whatever, late as fuck. And for whatever reason, I was especially hype that day. And in my mind, I think to myself, all right, you know what? I got to step it up. I got to step up the intensity. And then, you know, I just go crazy uh, extra hard. And that sets the new bar for the intensity of the workout, right? Like, I don't know if you can really get what I'm saying. Let me try to explain it a little better. I mean, honestly, that's what I mean. Like, every few months I would think to myself, okay, you know what, let's step it up. Let's go a little harder. And the more often you can do that, the easier it's going to be for you to reach you know, your maximum capacity on sets, right? Like for me, or for anybody, let's just take lat pull downs for example, because that's what we did today. Uh, hypothetically, with, uh, with a heavy amount of weight, there is a maximum number of reps that your body is capable of executing with, you know, reasonable form. Uh, you know, start off like all the way up, all the way down, then the reps start to get a little bit more like shorter because you can't squeeze all the way but whatever there's a number which is like pretty much as much as you can do for an actual effective set and for the most part you're never going to reach that number just because it's like your mind can't even get that far you know but the closer you can get to that the better and that's going to come with you know building up some mental toughness some some experience with uh, with high levels of exertion, and you know the only way you're gonna improve your ability to do that is by trying to get more and more hype every uh, every so often, every lift. So you know you're feeling extra tired. Fuck, man, you're not in an ideal position. But you get your music playing, you get your pre pumping through your veins, you can still go hard as fuck. So, main idea I'm trying to tell you is push yourself to the limit as often as possible. And that's going to be more effective than uh, spending more time learning how to do the most optimal, the most optimal shit. But there's value in it, of course. But I mean, you wouldn't try to teach a, uh, you wouldn't try to teach your 16 year old son how to drift. You wouldn't tell him the most perfect way to initiate a drift if he's never learned how to parallel park. So, Jesus, dude. Back's still pumped. Most likely we'll have a residual pump for a little while. Uh, time to go home, eat some more food, and then fucking go to bed. Go to freaking bed. Rest up. Oh, my God. When I was having a nap earlier today, 
I was dreaming that I was doing back day. Like I had dreamt that I just finished a few sets of lap pull downs and I was walking over to like uh, like a machine row in the Planet Fitness and then I woke up and I was like, oh, what the fuck? That's how crazy you gotta be, man. You gotta be thinking about this shit all the time. I've said this before, but I mean, over the last like four and a half years that I've been lifting, I can almost guarantee that working out and all, you know, related aspects, such as like diet and training and just like the gym in general, all the like media that I consume, like everything I'm scrolling through, it's all about the gym, man. Now, I'm not saying you got to be so crazy that it consumes your life, but if your goal is to get big, it is not going to hurt. It is not going to hurt. So, like I was saying, time to get the fuck out of here and go to bed. Uh, cardio in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, you know if you're doing your cardio and you know if you're not. Fucking assholes. <laughs> what? Okay, okay, final. Let's get out of here. All right, I will see you next time.